Λοιπόν, καλημέρα σε όλους και από μένα. Ε, θα, ε, αυτό είναι το, το πρώτο πάνελ της ημέρας. Ε, θα ε, μιλήσω στα αγγλικά κυρίως γιατί έχω και κάποια ε, σχόλια τα οποία θα ήταν πολύ δύσκολο να μεταφράσω και μία επιστολή που είναι επίσης στα αγγλικά. Ε, και νομίζω και με τους πάνελιστς είχαμε συζητήσει ότι στα αγγλικά θα γινόταν η συζήτηση. Ε, αν και εκτιμώ ιδιαίτερα την προσπάθεια του Πρόεδρου να μιλήσει στα ελληνικά, μια και βρισκόμαστε στη, στην πατρίδα. <coughs> λοιπόν, so my name is Ευθύμιος Καξίρας. I'm a faculty at Harvard University in Physics and Applied Mathematics and one of the founding members of HIAS. So, and I'll be the coordinator of this panel. Uh, so, uh, Originally, we had uh, uh, a plan to have four panel members and, and uh, two coordinators, but uh, one of the panel members uh, could not make it, uh, and I'll explain in a minute. Uh, so there's a slight change in the uh, composition of the panel. Uh, the member who could not make it is uh, Stratos Eftimiou. I wanted to say a couple of words about Stratos. Stratos uh, is the former Consul General of Greece in Boston, and uh, uh, at the moment uh, uh, his position was uh, the liaison of Greece to the European Parliament. Uh, and he just got promoted to spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, has to travel to Vilnius Uh, for a very important uh, meeting that is taking place uh, these days, so he couldn't make it to the panel. Stratos has been uh, extremely supportive and helpful to Hayas, and uh, he sent a note uh, trying to explain the reasons for uh, his absence today, so I'm reading his note. Dear members of Hayas, esteemed academics and researchers, It is with great disappointment and for reasons beyond my control that I had to cancel my participation to this prestigious panel. The clear message I had, uh, the intention to convey today, is that your consistent efforts to the networking of our scientific diaspora are praiseworthy and hugely beneficial to Greece. It is only through the harnessing of our scientific and research potential that Greece can play an active role among the, more, the most modern and developed nations. Therefore, the bridging of our scientific diaspora with the Greek academic institutions is of vital importance for the advancement of the country and the Greek people. I am convinced that the mapping of our academic diaspora uh, uh, potential and its combination with the great academic and research work of the domestic academic institutions will inject to Greece fresh energy and ideas. Hayas's visionary and pro bono role towards this direction is extremely central. It reminds me very much of the role of Filiki Eteria. Hayas is the Filiki Eteria of the 21st century. It is an organization aiming at combining the best of our intellectual resources for the benefit of Greece. <clears throat> Dear friends, in my former capacity as Consul General of Greece in Boston, I had the privilege of working closely with Hayes and its visionary founders. And from my own experience, I strongly believe, and I will never stop saying, that Greek embassies and consulates can serve as true hubs of scientific and innovation diplomacy, bringing together our scientific diaspora. As a member of the Greek Dipl diplomatic service, and from any position I will be in, I will always be at your disposal. Thank you and congratulations on your priceless initiative, Stratos Eftimiou. So we appreciate the very kind words of Stratos. We will miss him today, but of course he has uh, uh, very uh, uh, legitimate reasons for, for being absent. So with this uh, vacancy in the panel, we decided to switch the role of uh, one of the coordinators, uh, my colleague uh, Andreas Budovis, to a panelist. So the panel now consists of the following. Uh, the order is random. Please excuse me, I just uh, uh, noted the names down as, as uh, <laughs> uh, the, the thoughts and information were coming to, to, to my attention. Uh, so, uh, Spiros Pandis. Uh, Spiros is, the, uh, professor, is a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Patras. He is a distinguished chemical engineer with research interests in air quality, climate change, atmospheric chemistry, atmospheric pollution modeling, aerosol science, air quality and health, and environmental public policy analysis. 
Maria Spiropoulou. Maria is uh, the Shang Yi Chen Professor of Physics at the California Institute of Technology. Maria is a distinguished particle physicist whom I actually first met when she was a graduate student at Harvard and she works on the physics of fundamental particles and dark matter and more recently has turned her attention to quantum information science and technology with emphasis on quantum networks. Sophia Triandafilou. Sophia is a assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics at the University of Crete. Uh, her research interests include developing algorithms for causal discovery and inference, developing methods for integration of multiple data sources from different experimental conditions or modalities, and applying machine learning and causal inference methods to solve problems in biology and medicine. And finally, uh, Andreas Budovis. Andreas is professor in the School of Chemical Engineering uh, at the, uh, the National Technical University of Athens and since uh, October of 2019, the rector of uh, uh, the NTUA. His research focuses on the investigation of causes and the elimination of mechanisms pertaining to systems and processes of engineering interest, thus enabling the determination, prediction and modification of their behavior. All four panelists are also dedicated educators who have made many important contributions to higher education through teaching, writing of books, and development of new courses and pedagogical methods. So uh, the plan for the panel is the following. We will have a, an initial round of uh, short presentations by each of the panelists on what issues they think represent some of the most important challenges in education and research especially in the context of creating bridges on these topics between the Greek diaspora and our colleagues and younger scientists and students in our homeland. In round two, there will be an elaboration on these topics through questions and exchanges of views between the panelists. And finally, in round three, we will have questions from the audience to the panel. And I will make sure that there's ample time for the last part of the panel, namely the discussion with the audience and a lot of uh, exchange of uh, ideas and, and uh, uh, views. So uh, let's start with uh, the first part of the panel. That is a short presentation by each of the panelists on, on their views. And uh, uh, I will call on you in the following order. First, uh, uh, Spiros, then uh, Maria, then Sofia, and last. Andreas. So, Spiros, the floor is yours. Θα μιλήσω στα ελληνικά αν δεν υπάρχει αντίρρηση. Uh, θα μοιραστώ μαζί σας μια ιστορία για μια γέφυρα από την προσωπική μου ζωή. Uh, ξεκίνησε το 2004 όταν αποφάσισα να αφήσω το Carnegie Mellon στην Αμερική, στην, στο οποίο ήμουν καθηγητής για να γυρίσω στην Πάτρα. Uh, το Πανεπιστήμιο εκεί μου είπε αν μπορούμε να συνεχίσουμε τη συνεργασία μας και βρήκαν ένα μαγικό τρόπο uh, κάνοντας με research professor με 0% uh, και να ικανοποιήσουν τα αμερικάνικα, uh, τους αμερικάνικους περιορισμούς και τους ελληνικούς και ξαφνικά βρέθηκα να έχω μια γέφυρα στην οποία ήμουνα και στα δύο άκρα να έχω μια ερευνητική ομάδα στην Αμερική και μια στην Ελλάδα για 17 χρόνια. Τα αποτελέσματα αυτής της γέφυρας, όχι τόσο για να τα μιμηθεί κάποιος, αλλά είχα την ικανότητα ή την τύχη αν θέλετε να δω τη συνεργασία και από τις δυο μεριές, και από έξω προς τα μέσα και από μέσα προς τα έξω, ήταν τα παρακάτω. Ένα δουλεύει. Uh, αυτά τα 17 χρόνια βγήκαν 32 διδακτορικά, 18 στην Αμερική, 14 στην Ελλάδα. Uh, όλα τα παιδιά και τα οι φοιτητές του Κάνεγκη Μέλλον κάνουν ένα μεγάλο μέρος του διδακτορικού τους στην Ελλάδα και τα Ελληνόπουλα κάνουν ένα μέρος του διδακτορικού τους στην Αμερική. Uh, ήταν πολύ ικανοποιημένε και οι δύο ομάδες, για τα Ελληνόπουλα ίσως είναι προφανές, το να κάνεις ένα μέρος του διδακτορικού σου στην Αμερική δεν νομίζω ότι θέλει συζήτηση. Ε, το ενδιαφέρον ήταν ότι ήταν τρομερά ικανοποιημένα τα παιδιά από την Αμερική. Ε, σε τέτοιο σημείο που παρόλο που έλειπα από την Αμερική το μεγαλύτερο μέρος του χρόνου, ε, η ομάδα μας ήταν η πιο δημοφιλής. 
α, και δεν ήταν μόνο οι ελληνικές παραλίες ήταν το ότι τα αντίστοιχα παιδιά επειδή ασχολούνται με το περιβάλλον καταλαβαίνανε ότι οι ερχόμενοι στην Ευρώπη μπορούσαν να αποκτήσουν πολύ διαφορετικές εμπειρίες α, για να καταλάβετε οι συνάδελφοι εξ Αμερικής ένα καιρό, ξέρω, 6-7 χρόνια αφού ξεκίνησε αυτή η γέφυρα το εκεί τμήμα είχε τρεις NSF fellows και οι τρεις δουλεύανε στην ομάδα μου σε σημείο δηλαδή που με ζηλεύαν οι άλλοι συνάδελφοι α, γιατί και το τμήμα και η ομάδα τραβούσε τους καλύτερους φοιτητές και η γέφυρα ήταν πολύ σημαντική οπότε τα παιδιά ήταν ικανοποιημένα Uh, το άλλο το οποίο ήταν ιδιαίτερα σημαντικό ήταν ότι τελικά η ερευνητική δουλειά ήταν πολύ μεγαλύτερη και πολύ καλύτερη πιστεύω από το άθροισμα των δύο μερών uh, μέρος οφειλόταν και σε μένα uh, το κάτι το οποίο με είχε μάθει ο μέντορας μου από προπτυχιακό φοιτητή ο Άλκης ο Παγετάκης, είναι ότι η έρευνα στην Αμερική αισθάνεσαι σαν να είσαι μια χύτρα ταχύτητος στην Ελλάδα εκείνο τον καιρό μου είχε πει αισθάνεσαι σαν να είσαι σε μια κατσαρόλα που ζεσταίνεται δεν ζεσταίνεται έχουν βελτιωθεί τα πράγματα τώρα υπάρχουν μέρη της κατσαρόλας που όντω ζεσταίνονται και ίσως και βράζουν αλλά αυτή η διαφορά είναι πολύ έντονη όταν πηγαίνω έρχεσαι και τη βρήκα τρομερά χρήσιμη γιατί όταν με έπαιρνε λιγάκι ο ύπνο στην Ελλάδα πήγαινα στην Αμερική και ξύπναγα Αντίστροφα όμως στην Αμερική ένιωθα ότι έτρεχα σαν παλαβός όλο το καιρό και δεν είχα καιρό να σκεφτώ ε, Τις καλύτερες μου ιδέες αυτές, αυτά τα 17 χρόνια τις είχα στην Ελλάδα κυρίως αγναντεύοντας τη θάλασσα Οπότε έχει και άλλα ωφέλη α, η γέφυρα του να αλλάζει περιβάλλον Άλλα ωφέλη ήταν η διαφορετική ερευνητική χρηματοδότηση και το ότι μπορούσαμε επειδή και η Ευρώπη και η Αμερική ενδιαφέρονται για το περιβάλλον να χρησιμοποιούμε την Ευρώπη σαν εργαστήριο την Αμερική οπότε η χρηματοδότηση ήταν πολύ καλύτερη από ότι θα ήταν αν είμαστε δύο διαφορετικές ομάδες και το άλλο το πολύ σημαντικό στην ιστορία είναι ότι βοήθησε και αρκετούς συναδέλφους οι οποίοι είτε από την Ελλάδα δεν θα είχαν λόγο να πάνε στην Αμερική είτε από την Αμερική να έρθουν στην Ελλάδα και χρησιμοποίησαν αυτή τη γέφυρα για να περάσουν από το ένα μέρος στο άλλο υπήρξαν συνεργασίες συναδέλφων μου στα δύο τμήματα δυστυχώς δεν κράτησαν πολύ γιατί το να καταφέρουν να να συνεχίσουν αυτά τα πράγματα είναι δύσκολα και νομίζω ότι αυτό είναι και το ένα κομμάτι της συζήτησης σήμερα. Οπότε αυτά ήθελα να πω για, την, για τη γέφυρα και αργότερα μπορούμε να συζητήσουμε τις, τις λεπτομέρειες. Thank you, Spiros. Uh, I'm gonna call on Maria next and uh, I guess uh, we're bilingual. Feel free to express yourselves as you see fit. Η πατρινή όταν λένε γέφυρα πάντως θύμια νοούν τη γέφυρα ρίου αντιρίου <laughs> την οποία και αγναντεύουν από οπουδήποτε βρίσκονται στους πανεπιστήμιους. Βοηθάει <laughs> πολύ στις ερευνητικές ιδέες, συμφωνώ. Uh, thank you, thank you everybody and thank you to the organizers for including me in uh, this wonderful symposium. Uh, I learned a lot yesterday and I got very impressed with, uh, uh, especially with the early career scientists that showed so much work uh, on the frontiers in their individual domains. The question, as uh, Uh, Professor Kaxiras mentioned the first question is about challenges to creating these exchanges and the mobility and creating collaborations. So um, as an example of building these exchanges and building the frameworks, I will give um, uh, the example of CERN to start with. It's already an in international, there is an international framework built in since 1950. It was prepared in UNESCO, and it was the U.S. scientist, I.I. Rabi, that created together with Europeans this lab with a scope to prepare 
workforce development and compete in science and technology with America, bringing all the European countries together after the war. So the framework was almost a, a remedy for uh, post-World War II uh, situation in Europe. Within this framework, and it's important that the framework is multinational, pan-European to start with, with associate members. It includes universities. In the past 10 years or so, it includes a lot of industrial component with the open lab, specifically for the emerging areas of AI and now quantum science and technology, where companies are funding efforts for workforce development through the academic institutions that partner with CERN and send the students there, including undergraduate students. Now, the challenge, that, that was a solution that was asked to become a solution because of, a, you can call them political or geopolitical or human issues. Um, in, without these, I, I think we are in an inflection point where it was mentioned in the opening remarks that sciences and technology are coming together and in fact I would argue humanities are coming together with the sciences in order to interrogate how we do science and the consequences, not only in the abstract, but the consequences that we can envision for the 20 years, 50 years ahead of time. We didn't do that 50 years ago. There was a Jean Lepore, a colleague of uh, Professor Caxiras at Harvard, um, wrote a book where the, she, remind, she went and talked to everybody that created the internet and computing, etc. if they envisioned what was happening today. And they didn't think about it because they cared about their science and their technology and to prepare products. However, in today's world, we see the impacts that are um, significant and some of it um, not only on the positive side significant but toxic. So the, the multi-domain, including the humanities, need to have collaborations I think uh, pushes towards creating frameworks that will have these exchanges. So the challenges that we are facing as humanity are pushing the scientists and the technologists to work together. Um, we have uh, individual, individually, for example, Harvard or Caltech, um, I have the opportunity within the framework, not with miracles, within the framework to bring special graduate students from Greece um, that are affiliated with Greek University to do two years at Caltech as a part of their PhD thesis. The bureaucracy is huge. It's difficult, but it's possible. If there is more than one organization involved and the legal frameworks are, the wrinkles on the legal frameworks can be ironed out, it is, it, it is that that stops the, the, the possibility of having this collaboration. So I think um, we should interrogate really the, the IP agreements that everybody needs right now because you have science and technology impacting everyday life. Um, and other than the, the, if we solve legal frameworks or if we create templates of MOUs with the universities, between universities, and if we can use laboratories that already have frameworks and legal support to host initiatives of collaborations, I think this particular challenge um, of creating exchanges, my, some of the challenges of creating exchanges might be smoothed out and we can have pilot programs to test this out first. So I will stop here because I think I said too many words. Well, that's perfectly fine. Thank you, Maria. So I'll call on Sofia next. Γεια σα και από μένα. Ακούγουμε. Ευχαριστώ πολύ και εγώ καταρχά για την πρόσκληση να είμαι εδώ στο πάνελ. 
Εγώ θέλω να μιλήσω λίγο. Το θέμα ήταν οι γέφυρε. Η χρηματοδότηση είναι πάντα μια πολύ καλή γέφυρα, κατά τη γνώμη μου. Οπότε θέλω λίγο να μιλήσω ε, για την εμπειρία μου και εγώ σα, ε, με την χρηματοδότηση από την Αμερική. Εγώ έφυγα παρόμοια με το Σπυρό, το Πίτσμπουργκ έχουμε επιδιώχνει. <laughs> είναι μια, ένα, πώ το λένε, ε, hub για να γυρνάμε πίσω. Έφυγα από το Πίτσμπουργκ που ήμουν στο, στο Πανεπιστήμιο του Πίτσμπουργκ ε, μέχρι το 2021 και γύρισα στην Ελλάδα στο Πανεπιστήμιο Κρήτη. Ε, όταν γύρισα ήμουν co-investigator σε δύο grants, σε δύο προγράμματα από το National Institute of Health στην Αμερική και ξεκίνησα αμέσως τη διαδικασία για να μπορεί να γίνει ένα sub award και να συνεχίσω να εργάζομαι σε αυτά τα προγράμματα όντας στο Πανεπιστήμιο Κρήτης. Ε, το, πανε, το Πανεπιστήμιο Κρήτης τότε δεν, είχε, δεν είμαι γενικά ε, major ας πούμε, source of funding Προφανώ τα αμερικάνικα ε, grants για τα ελληνικά πανεπιστήμια. Αυτό εντάξει, είναι αυτονόητο. Ε, ξεκίνησα λοιπόν να κάνω αυτή τη διαδικασία με τους administrators του Πανεπιστημίου Κρήτης τον Οκτώβριο του 2021. Ήταν μια πάρα πολύ αργή γραφειοκρατική και επίπονη διαδικασία. Απλά θα πω ότι το Saba World τελικά ήταν, έγινε executed, δηλαδή ολοκληρώθηκε το Φεβρουάριο του 2023. Δηλαδή μας πήρε 1,5 χρόνο. Ε, το ένα από τα δύο έργα είχε σχεδόν ε, ολοκληρωθεί, εντάξει όχι ακόμα, αλλά τέλος πάντων ε, ήταν μια πάρα πάρα πολύ αργή διαδικασία. Είχε γραφειοκρατία και από τις δύο μεριές. Από το ένα η AIDS έπρεπε να εγκρίνουν ε, το ότι θα πρέπει να φύγουν αυτά τα χρήματα από την Αμερική. Από, τη, από το Πανεπιστήμιο εδώ πέρα είχαμε άλλα προβλήματα που είχαν να κάνουν και με μια μετάβαση, administrative μετάβαση που γινόταν τότε στα αμερικάνικα grants που ήταν ότι από το dance number, πρέπει να πας στο sum.gov, τελευταία είχαν μια δική τους, ένα δικό τους transition που κάνανε, οπότε αυτό το έκανε ακόμα πιο δύσκολο. Ε, εγώ αυτό που ήθελα να κάνω, όχι τόσο πολύ σαν τοποθέτηση, αλλά ίσως ερώτηση στα πιο senior μέλη, στο Σπύρο και στα υπόλοιπα senior μέλη του Χάιας και κυρίω αυτούς που βρίσκονται στην άλλη πλευρά του Ατλαντικού, είναι... Ε, επειδή οι συνεργασίε για μένα που έχω με την Αμερική είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικέ για όλου του λόγου που είπαν οι προελίσσαντε. Ε, και σκεπτόμενοι πώ μπορώ να τι συνεχίσω και να πάρω καινούργια χρηματοδότηση για αυτέ, ε, η αίσθηση που έχω, χωρί να είναι βεβαιότητα όμω, είναι ότι οι ευρωπαϊκοί οργανισμοί έχουν μια δυσπιστία στο να χρηματοδοτήσουν πράγματα που είναι. Στην Αμερική, δηλαδή να, διώξουν τα χρήματα, να, να δώσουν ευρωπαϊκά χρήματα για να χρηματοδοτήσουν ένα ε, πρόγραμμα στην Αμερική, ένα πανεπιστήμιο στην Αμερική. Και αντίστοιχα, ότι στα Αμερι... οι Αμερικάνικοι οργανισμοί έχουν και αυτοί μία δυσκολία ή τέλο πάντων είναι ένα έξτρα, ε, ε, έχουν μία έξτρα δυσπιστία στο να στείλουν χρήματα να χρηματοδοτήσουν ένα ε, άτομο ή μία ομάδα που βρίσκεται στην Ελλάδα. Οπότε, απλά. Ε, ε, Πιο πολύ σαν ερώτηση θέλω να το κάνω, στους είπαμε πιο seniors, αν όντως υπάρχει αυτή η κουλτούρα ή αν είναι δική μου εντύπωση και αν πιθανώς υπάρχουν κάποιοι άλλοι μηχανισμοί που εγώ δεν τους ξέρω και θα μπορούσαν να ε, χρηματοδοτήσουν τέτοιου είδους ε, ε, το λένε, ε, συνεργασίες που δεν είναι εντός Ευρώπης. Αυτό. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Η, η δική μου η απάντηση είναι απλή, ότι εγκατέλειψα αυτή την προσπάθεια πολύ νωρίς και η ιδέα ήταν ότι τα αμερικάνικα χρήματα μένανε στην Αμερική και χρηματοδοτούσαν τις εκεί προσπάθειες, τα ευρωπαϊκά και τα ελληνικά μένανε στην Ευρώπη γιατί οτιδήποτε άλλο, όπως είπες, ήταν φοβερά πολύπλοκο και απλώς υπήρχε η δυνατότητα μόχλευσης δηλαδή το να χρησιμοποιείς σε κάποια ευρωπαϊκή πρόταση τη δυνατότητα να συνεργαστείς με την αμερικάνικη πλευρά ή το αντίστροφο. Αλλά ναι, το να περνάν τα χρήματα τον Ατλαντικό είναι φοβερά δύσκολο. Ναι, θα πιστεύω ότι υπάρχει πολλά πιστεύωσης αυτές τις μέρες που πρέπει να είναι εξεπλώσεις. Can also be uh, elaborated on in, in later discussion. Let me give the floor also to Andreas. Well, apparently we have a bilingual panel, <laughs> and uh, uh, you didn't pull out the uh, yellow cards to the uh, previous <laughs> panelists for uh, violating the rules that we agreed on. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, uh, thinking and uh, talking about uh, bridges in education and research, uh, especially in education, we have to understand that uh, the main issues of national interest uh, 
the most important being the brain drain. Uh, whatever we think and plan uh, to implement uh, has to serve the purpose of reversing the brain drain. Uh, we also need to understand the whole picture, uh, including the degree of internationalization of the Greek universities. Uh, and I will mention a few uh, aspects of this particular issue. Uh, the instruction uh, language, especially in undergraduate level, in Greek universities is Greek. Uh, the percentage of international students in Greek universities is among the lowest in Europe. Uh, you will not see Chinese students in Greek university campuses, for example. Uh, no foreign faculty members, this is not allowed. Uh, no foreign PhD students, with a few exceptions. Uh, not many uh, professors of Greek universities uh, are in this room today. Uh, the auditoriums in the National Technical University of Athens campus is flooded with students who and distinguished Greek professors uh, from abroad are delivering uh, specially designed seminars organized by the schools, not by just individual colleagues. Uh, and the auditorium in Democritos for the last three days, Monday to uh, Wednesday, uh, was packed uh, by other graduate students uh, attending the Universal Artificial Intelligence uh, course uh, offered, organized and offered by Hayas, by Dimitris Bertsimas and uh, Yorgos Tamu from ETU and other uh, Greek colleagues involved in this. Uh, so we have to uh, keep in mind all these things and uh, I'm glad that uh, the director of the uh, Athens University of Economic and Business just joined in for a uh, short period of time just to indicate the interest of uh, other academic institutions of Greece to uh, uh, get involved with this highest effort. And uh, it's important for some initiatives to be cultivated from top down, although bottom up is very essential for what we are doing here. Uh, it's also very important to understand and exploit current developments and the current situation, especially the, the timing uh, uh, as we speak, we have a new government, uh, we have a uh, new Minister of Education. Uh, extroversion uh, is on a good track since uh, some three years ago. Uh, it was just yesterday that the Prime Minister addressing the Parliament referred to uh, the possibilities for foreign universities uh, coming to Greece based uh, on bilateral agreements uh, while the revision of Article 16 of the Constitution uh, is uh, still pending. Uh, I'd like to mention uh, some particular um, uh, opportunities uh, which are uh, uh, very recently launched in, uh, in, in our academic system and it's about the visiting professors and researchers uh, that's a new uh, uh, initiative uh, launched by the government. Its uh, uh, total budget of this call is for 85 uh, million euros. And it will be covered uh, uh, from the uh, recovery and resilience uh, facility. 60 million goes to RRF. And uh, also 25 million uh, private funding coming from the industry. Uh, each proposal is up to 35,000 uh, euros for a maximum duration of three years. Actually, we are discussing about this with many colleagues uh, uh, attending our activities here. Uh, the universities, in collaboration with the private sector, business industry, uh, are invited to submit proposals as we speak, and it's on the first come, first serve basis, uh, for the funding of research projects together with a visiting professor or visiting researcher from uh, uh, abroad. And uh, this is uh, 25 uh, millions coming from uh, 25, uh, to, uh, no, uh, two, two, uh, 240 
thousand uh, euros coming from public expenditure per proposal and uh, 100,000 euros from, pri from private expenditure. Well, eligible, eligible costs are salary, relocation costs, costs for participation in conferences, costs for instruments and equipment and consumables, etc. Uh, so it, this is important. Uh, keep that in mind. And, uh, Colleagues from abroad have already started, you know, uh, expressing their interest, and the universities are moving in this direction. Now, regarding bridges in education, I want to emphasize on uh, something very particular uh, and very important. I think Europe, to my opinion, is the most advantageous uh, uh, domain for action. Uh, student and staff mobility through Erasmus programs. Maria already mentioned the CERN uh, because no tuition fees. There are alliances forming European universities as we speak with the possibility to develop common curricula, joint specific uh, educational activities, getting micro credentials, uh, joint uh, master programs, joint degrees, uh, co supervision of PhD thesis, joint PhD degrees, and uh, of course, and that's the most important, funding of uh, joint research projects. Uh, regarding cooperation with uh, UK, and we have many colleagues, uh, Greek colleagues there. Uh, things are in a very bad shape due to Brexit. And Switzerland is a special case which uh, we can exploit. And uh, regarding the educational part of the bridging, uh, Switzerland has uh, her own Erasmus program, which is working uh, very well, I think. Well, that's for uh, my introductory statements, uh, uh, Thibault. Thank you, Andreas. And, and uh, thank you all for this uh, very in interesting and in, in, uh, 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 thought-provoking uh, comments uh, that uh, you put on the table. Uh, so let me sort of start the second round uh, where uh, there could be more of uh, uh, exchanges and, and uh, questions among the panelists. And uh, So the, uh, I'd like to start maybe with uh, Spiros again. Uh, you talked to us about uh, the benefits of uh, being in, in uh, Greece and, and uh, uh, the, the cro uh, uh, across the Atlantic. Uh, what about some of the uh, challenges or uh, opportunities or, or maybe even roadblocks? And you mentioned some of that also. And how can we overcome this? Could you comment on that? Ναι, το πρώτο μεγαλύτερο εμπόδιο ήταν η γραφειοκρατία και εδώ υπάρχουν εκπλήξεις. Πίστευα ότι η ελληνική γραφειοκρατία θα είναι το μεγαλύτερο πρόβλημα και περιέργως όταν εξήγησα στις τότε πριτανικές αρχές την κατάσταση είχα συμπληρώσει κάποιο έντυπο που μας ζητάνε κάθε χρόνο στην Ελλάδα για σχέσεις με άλλα πανεπιστήμια και τα λοιπά η ελληνική γραφειοκρατία έλυσε το γόρδιο δεσμό πολύ εύκολα ο Αντιπρίτανης έσκησε το αντίστοιχο χαρτί μου λέει από τη στιγμή που κάνεις τη δουλειά σου καλά εδώ είμαστε μια χαρά άμα προωθήσω το χαρτί που μου έδωσε, θα φάω τα επόμενα τέσσερα χρόνια για να βρω άκρη με το τι γίνεται οπότε το don't ask, don't tell είναι η καλύτερη λύση και μου λέει απλώς δεν θέλω ποτέ να ακούσω παράπονο για σένα οπότε η ελληνική γραφειοκρατία έλυσε το θέμα σε πέντε λεπτά η αμερικάνικη γραφειοκρατία που φαινόταν ότι είχε βρει τη χρυσή λύση με το 0% αυτό το 0% είναι τρομερή εφεύρεση καθώς πέρναγαν τα χρόνια άρχισε να βρίσκεται υποεπίθεση από στήφοι δικηγόρων αρκετοί συνάδελφοι σε αμερικάνικα πανεπιστήμια πρέπει να έχουν αυτή την εμπειρία εισβολής δικηγόρων περισσότερων και περισσότερων σε κάθε πανεπιστήμιο οπότε σε κάποια στιγμή που βοηθούμενοι και από τους νόμους του Τραμπ για το Make America Great Again οι δικηγόροι ανακάλυψαν την περίπτωσή μου και ξαφνικά πραγματικά του σηκώθηκε η τρίχα στο κεφάλι. Υπήρχε το θέμα του intellectual property, το οποίο όντω είναι θέμα σε αυτές τις συνεργασίες, αλλά αυτό μπορεί να λυθεί με κάποια συμφωνία μεταξύ των οργανισμών. Αυτό που δεν μπορούσαν να καταλάβουν ήταν πώς κάποιος μπορούσε να δουλεύει στο πανεπιστήμιο 0% του χρόνου του. Και λέει πώς είναι δυνατόν να έχεις τόσα προγράμματα εδώ και τα λοιπά και να μην δουλεύεις. Τους λέω η γυναίκα μου μου λέει ότι είμαι χαζός οπότε αυτή είναι η εξηγήση δουλεύω και δεν πληρώνομαι. Μου λέει δεν είναι αρκετό αυτό μόλις διαιρούμε τη δουλειά που κάνεις με το μηδέν φαίνεται ότι έχεις άπειρη παραγωγικότητα. 
Και του λέω, πού βλέπετε το κακό εδώ, δηλαδή είμαι ο πιο παραγωγικό καθηγητή του Πανεπιστημίου. Όχι, μου λέει, δεν μπορούμε να το κάνουμε αυτό. Α, να κόψω λίγο αυτή τη διοίκηση, τη συζήτηση. Οι δικηγόροι δεν μπορούσαν να δεχτούν ότι κάποιο μπορεί να έχει ερευνητικά προγράμματα στην Αμερική και να μην πληρώνεται. Για αυτού ήταν απαράδεκτο. Οπότε η σχέση μου με την Αμερική λόγω της Αμερικάνικης γραφειοκρατίας πηγαίνει προς το τέλος. Ο τελευταίος μου φοιτητής παίρνει διδακτορικό τον επόμενο μήνα. Οπότε περιέργως ήταν η Αμερικάνικη γραφειοκρατία που γκρέμισε τη γέφυρα. Α, το δεύτερο πρόβλημα το οποίο είμαι σίγουρος ότι όλοι το εκτιμούμε είναι ότι για να δουλέψουν αυτές οι γέφυρες για τα παιδιά που κάνουν διδακτορικό πρέπει να ταξιδεύουν στο άλλο μέρος. Και εδώ μπαίνουμε στα έξοδα τα οποία χρειάζονται, κυρίως για την παραμονή των παιδιών. Και ναι μεν στην Ελλάδα είναι αρκετά φτηνότερα, για τα Ελληνόπουλα καταλαβαίνετε ότι η Αμερική το αντίστοιχο έξοδο για να μείνει σε έξι μήνες είναι δυσθεόρατο. Τα αντίστοιχα παιδιά λύσανε κυρίως το πρόβλημα μένοντας ο ένας στο σπίτι του άλλου. Αλλά αυτό δούλεψε στη συγκεκριμένη περίπτωση γενικά το κάνει δύσκολο Α, υπάρχει και η δυσκολία ότι τα μέρη της γέφυρας πρέπει να ταξιδεύουν εδώ καταλαβαίνετε ταξίδευα εγώ δύο φορές έχω νομίζω το παγκόσμιο ρεκόρ ταξιδιών Πάτρα Πίτσμπουργκ το έκανα 200 φορές μέσα σε 17 χρόνια έφτασα στο σημείο να μου αρέσει το φαΐ του αεροπλάνου <laughs> αλλά ναι ό, όλα αυτά απαιτούν αρκετό χρόνο και ναι το Zoom βοηθάει η, αλλά δεν είναι το ίδιο για να υπάρξει πραγματικά η γέφυρα α, και να, έχει, α, να μπορέσει να διαρκέσει στο χρόνο χρειάζεται η προσωπική επαφή α, το τρίτο και τελευταίο πρόβλημα α, το οποίο υπήρχε και ρωτήσαμε το συζητήσαμε ήδη είναι η χρηματοδότηση και σας είπα ότι απλώς η λύση ήταν μη μεταφέρεις χρήματα. Δεν μπορούσα να βρω κάτι καλύτερο. Ευχαριστώ, Σπύρο. Uh, by the way, your experience is uh, uh, consistent with uh, uh, my own experience. Recently, the uh, bureaucracy in American institutions is growing uh, alarmingly fast and uh, is really choking a lot of uh, the possible uh, exchanges and, and so on. Uh, so maybe uh, uh, Maria can also elaborate on some of the things that you mentioned, especially uh, how can we use this framework that you were discussing as, as a bridge and, and so on and what are the challenges there yes and um uh, yeah i can elaborate on that make sure I... you um, yeah yes and um thank you i can elaborate on that but I, I wanted to double down on what you said about the public private partnership of funding and the effort you started here i think this is a a, a, a very positive direction and in the United States, in the context of private-public partnerships, and specifically academic institutions, research institutions, and industries, there is ways of established um, memoranda of understanding and CRADAS, what we call CRADAS, uh, which is, uh, templates exist. It does take more time to do that, and as Professor Kaxi has mentioned, that we see that, we feel that. But also, uh, at the lab right now, if I have an undergraduate student or a high school student, I cannot get them in the lab as volunteers. There's no such thing as volunteering and zero payment. I have to pay them, and I have to pay them according to the labor laws not of the United States, of the state, namely California. So, and California is giving me, for the high school student or for the undergraduate student, what is the range I have to pay? So yes, there is legal frameworks that we have to tread carefully, and we do, but the idea of free labor doesn't exist anymore. And I think this is significant not only in terms of bureaucracy, but significant in recognizing people's work as such and uh, 
um, spoken plainly, we don't take advantage of anyone. Anyone that works gets paid, including from the very young ages to to every every age. Now, the the public private partnerships, the universities, national laboratories, research centers, and bigger collaborations of single PIs that don't want to work just by themselves, but they can forge collaboration, create the network of people that can build the framework so that everybody takes advantage of that. In examples of cooperative agreements between universities and laboratories, bring the resources of the lab, and the lab does have resources, legal resources, dealing with the agencies, dealing with the funding, bring that together so that you can remove these problems that we heard about um, in, in a in, in an somewhat elaborate, somewhat sophisticated way, but without taking infinite time. Collaboration is the key here and having networks and networks of networks. This is why this effort here, this effort of the bridges that include all of these people that you saw is a network and everyone within the network has their own network. So the network of networks and the efforts to pay it, that we can pay attention in the US, in Europe, in Greece in particular, on how to make it a win-win-win cannot be a win for one. It has to be a multi-win. So all the partners have to get something out of it. And we have to acknowledge that because if we only want one party, if we go with this mentality and this mind, frame of mind, then it's, it's very, very difficult because I need to know that the exchange of the clever, um, um, hardworking Greek kid is part of my workforce development plan, and you need to know that I will give you back, you know, whether it is funding or whether this is an exchange. And if we sit in the same table and make a discussion and write the agreement, the agreement has to be multilateral win, and there will be compromises. So it's, it's um, but I want to say, this type of agreements exist, uh, uh, templates, and the difficulty is to make it flat and to make it one kind that covers everything, that is extremely difficult. So within a multilateral network of networks, people will want to have uh, bilateral agreements as well and develop these, starting from a solid, robust framework though, so not inventing it from scratch. So I believe if we take advantage of, of this, we can, we can go farther. And when I say this, I mean um, the biggest science is astronomy, so there, could, there, there couldn't be James Webb without uh, Europe and the US. Um, there couldn't be a Higgs boson without the US and Europe. So thinking along these lines, especially for the emerging areas that the, that, uh, uh, the organization here is very rightfully putting the, the, the investment, the thought, the, the thought investment and the resources, um, I think it's possible to get it, to get, to get progress in this direction. Thank you, Maria. Uh, interestingly, uh, it was just announced by the new government yesterday, but a new framework is being worked out to enhance these kinds of bilateral collaborations and, and facilitate them and so on. So maybe, uh, Sophia, w w would you care to also comment on this mobility, general issue of mobility and challenges and opportunities? Sure. I'm afraid I'll get a red card now, so I'll, talk, I'll speak in English for <laughs> the second okay. part. <laughs> Just to switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I think the bridge in education so far has been a one-way bridge. So good students in Greece typically do their undergrads here and then they uh, go abroad to do their master's studies or uh, get their PhDs. Um, I think this, is, this results in brain drain. It's very hard once you cross that bridge. You know, it, it becomes harder and harder to uh, um, uh, cross it back the other direction. 
but I think that uh, this, there is a, a possibility for this to change the, and there is the potential uh, for a change. I think the, last few, the past few years a lot of Greek universities have developed uh, English speaking programs and I think this can be a great source of attraction for people who may be uh, students who maybe have a connection to Greece or may or may not have a connection to Greece uh, and uh, want to um, study in the very, very good quality uh, Greek universities. So as an example, uh, in the University of Crete, we recently uh, uh, has developed a new program, an undergraduate program in medicine. So this is an English speaking undergraduate program, I believe. Uh, that uh, the University of Athens also has one and the University of Thessaloniki also has one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this, has a, this is a, a program that has tuition fees, but these tuition fees are uh, not comparable, of course, to tuition fees abroad. So I think uh, it can be a very uh, solid um, financial choice for students abroad who uh, want to study medicine. Uh, we also have uh, eight in, in, uh, English speaking uh, uh, master's programs. So we have master's programs taught exclusively in English and open to international students. Uh, also some of them uh, may have some tuition. I, for example, we have a new program in data analysis and machine learning and statistical machine learning. <coughs> Uh, which I'm involved in, and I know that this has some tuition. I think I believe it's 3,000 euros for the entire program for international students. So it's the cost is pretty low compared to uh, universities in the U.S. or other major universities in the U.K. or uh, Europe. Um, some of these programs have, are, for, are free, they don't have any tuition. And I think uh, it's important to note that uh, a major obstacle for international students to come and do their postgraduate studies in Greece uh, was the ATAP. <laughs> People who know, know, I guess. Uh, so the international students who already had a degree from a foreign university would need to get a certification for their degree from a Greek bureaucratic uh, organization, uh, but this has been lifted recently. I think this is a great development. The universities can now uh, uh, vet, essentially, they can say, I believe that this person, the, the degree from that university is a valid degree and they can, uh, they, they, the students not, do not need to go through this really, really hard and a long process of certifying their um, degrees through the OTAP. So I think this is a great opportunity to you know, have the bridge also uh, in the other direction. Thank you, Sofia. Uh, and uh, maybe, uh, Andreas, uh, could you also comment on some of the challenges in educational interaction, especially with U.S. universities, and maybe recipes to overcome roadblocks? Uh, I will comment on some of the uh, uh, things that were mentioned uh, in the second round of our discussion here uh, regarding bureaucracy. European bureaucracy is horrible and uh, it is induced in European universities. It's not, not only in Brussels, it's in each European university. If you uh, ever need to deal as a rector or as a top administrator with uh, Erasmus type of things, uh, you will realize that. And uh, may I say also that uh, Maria uh, emphasized on that, and I said that in my first round of uh, uh, expressing the key things. The purpose of this uh, visiting researchers and professors in Greek universities with the involvement of the industry uh, is, is uh, very targeted, and it's different than whatever we had before regarding this particular activity. Uh, so, I call your attention to that, and uh, regarding the, uh, the, the highest and the effort the highest is putting in these directions, I think we need, at the very beginning, uh, some little success stories. And for little or bigger success stories, what is necessary is to get the, uh, the faculty of Greek universities involved, and uh, we also need to, uh, I envision actually the students, the other graduate students, uh, to become ambassadors of HIAS in their universities. Uh, I base this, you know, uh, optimistic uh, uh, view uh, on what we have seen in Democritus in the AI uh, universal uh, course a few days ago and other things that I mentioned before. Now, regarding uh, uh, 
some of the obstacles and adversities mentioned by uh, Spiros and uh, I, Sophia. Uh, again, the landscape in Europe is uh, very different and it's very advantageous regarding what uh, we can do or hope or plan uh, with the United States. Uh, may I mention, uh, Efimi, since you refer to uh, challenges, uh, NTUA has uh, signed uh, a year ago uh, a bilateral uh, uh, agreement for dual degree, and we're talking about undergraduate degree, with Columbia University. And uh, we're facing this uh, very serious problems, and the lawyers of both sides are involved in this. The, uh, the overall cost for one student for one year to get their degree from uh, Colombia, a Greek student going there, is about $80,000, uh, uh, which is prohibited. And as a matter of fact, may I suggest something for your consideration? If we are to move a Greek student, undergraduate student, a mature undergraduate student at the fourth year towards the fifth, in from NTUA, NTUA, as you know, uh, most of you are from NTUA graduates, uh, uh, we have a diploma thesis. Diploma thesis is not in a uh, purely educational activity. It is uh, partially research activity. Uh, so a student who will be going from NTUA to Columbia or any other university would not should be treated as an undergraduate student going there to take courses. Uh, he is going there to do, among other things, and a substantial part of uh, his or her diploma thesis. So he is eligible, to my opinion, to get some funding from the advisors from the other side from uh, his or her research grants. Uh, this is something that we have to work on and find solutions uh, to cope with these uh, adversities. Regarding other things that uh, especially Sophia mentioned, Cyprus is a very interesting case regarding the opening up of uh, uh, institutions uh, offering uh, courses uh, in medicine or in other disciplines uh, uh, f with full degree and with tuition fees at a certain level. And uh, actually what we are doing here in uh, Athens and uh, in uh, the University of Athens and the University of Thessaloniki, we are trying to beat the Cypriots uh, regarding the uh, level of, of tuition fees. We are almost half of them. Oh. And we are attracting people from the Cyprus market to the Greek market. So this is a very interesting experiment. And, uh, well, that, that's it for, for the moment. Okay, well, thanks uh, again all the panelists for their uh, interesting and thought-provoking remarks. Uh, I think we're doing very well with time. Uh, and and uh, uh, we're about to turn the discussion open to uh, the uh, uh, audience. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, uh, make just a few quick remarks on the interesting things that we have heard. So the first one is that uh, I'm beginning to wonder whether we should uh, look at the brain drain and brain gain issues as uh, uh, one way, uh, uh, one being uh, uh, beneficial, the other one being uh, 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 hurtful to the country. Uh, and maybe this is not the right uh, way to perceive this problem anymore. Maybe we need to broaden our view and think of this as a, a bi-directional motion. And as long as there's some balance, uh, uh, we uh, actually gain from this bi-directional motion. So it's more like a bridge rather than loss in one direction, gain in the other direction. So I'm just uh, a, a suggestion. The other comment that I would like to make is that uh, in the last uh, uh, year or so, it has come to my attention that uh, a lot of uh, colleagues, both from the uh, uh, European side and from the US side, are taking advantage of ERC grants, which give some level of flexibility. And uh, this is a potential mechanism for strengthening uh, 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 collaborations. And uh, apparently, there's uh, uh, more leeway in those types of grants to have uh, 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 shared uh, 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 researchers, like postdocs, and so on. So this is a, a, a possible thing to take. To, uh, 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 aspect to take advantage of these possibilities. So the last thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, 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 very uh, relevant to what Andreas was just describing, uh, I believe there is a rule in French universities that the, the students uh, uh, 
at least certain universities have to have a, a, an experience uh, abroad for part of their final year. And the French students are really persistent. They, they really uh, 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 pursue this uh, uh, very vigorously because it's a requirement. And they find a way to visit US universities and fulfill this requirement. So if it were made as a requirement and there were some mechanism of supporting these students, that would be great. By the way, some of these French students are so good that we feel happy to support them from our own resources. So there's, there's possibilities there, and, and as long as there's the will, I think we can uh, work on making them happen. Okay, so that's for my uh, short uh, comments. So I'd like to open the discussion now and uh, welcome uh, uh, questions from the audience uh, to the panelists. So, uh, Dimitri, <laughs> please go ahead. <laughs> Which one of the two? Well, he, uh, Saudi has raised his hand first, uh, and, and uh, Bertimas his hand second, so I'll follow the order that I so saw. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, my, my name is Dimitri Psautis. Uh, it's interesting because I've done my career half in the U.S., actually at uh, Caltech and Carnegie Mellon. And uh, the other half here, I went to Metrovio uh, for, for a while, uh, uh, for a year, and then I've been in Switzerland since. Uh, and also I have an appointment in Crete. <laughs> so uh, the difference between being able to collaborate with uh, Greece from the US and, uh, and Europe is amazing. I mean, from Europe it's easy. I have all kinds of projects, all kinds of interactions. Of course, there's the ERC, not the Engineering Research Center. I assume you mean the European Research. Uh... Yes, I meant the European Research Council grants, right. which allow collaboration. Some, yeah, very some. Yeah, some. There's other mechanisms that allow, uh, particularly from, from Switzerland. So it's much easier from Europeans. So the discussion here has focused a lot on dealing with the Americans, which is becoming more and more difficult and awkward because they have all kinds of, I mean, if you have a, uh, I have DARPA grants in Switzerland, I have NIH grants in Switzerland, it's possible. But I hesitate because if you travel to China, now you have to submit stuff to, uh, uh, to the Americans and so forth. I, I'm also an American citizen, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a. So I wonder why we focus so much on America is a place for bridges, but it's becoming a more and more difficult, uh, it depends on the elections, I guess, coming up. But uh, uh, whereas in Europe, we're part of the European Union, it's, there's many things we can do in Europe. And uh, 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 I, I think that's something that uh, maybe highest and all of us should think about European or other places like China or uh, Japan. Well, I, I don't know how the panelists feel, but uh, we are part of Europe, so it's not... <laughs> uh, other European countries. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, of course yes. Dimitri, I think I emphasized on that. Yes. that the, uh, Europe is the most advantageous uh, domain for uh, uh, yes. our activities. Uh, well, most of the people here today uh, come from the United States, uh, not from, uh, from European universities. Uh, you are an exception and few others. Most of uh, the colleagues here are from the U.S. Well, it's a coincidence that we are doing this thing during this period of uh, the year in July and s m many of you have come for combined vacations and uh, a presence in Greece. Uh, uh, but uh, the most important thing is to enlarge our uh, uh, activity to the European domain. And it's unfortunate that the uh, U.K., which is hosting a lot of Greek uh, academics, is in a very uh, adverse position now because of Brexit. We have seen very uh, difficult situations with offers from uh, UK universities to Greek, to NTUA in particular, uh, graduates, uh, which they have to withdraw because they realize that they have to pay three times uh, higher fees for the student compared to, compared to UK citizens. No, I think that uh, we are all in agreement, right, that uh, the bridges uh, to Europe right now appear a lot easier to build than uh, the, the bridges to the U.S. that are becoming uh, progressively more difficult and more unstable. Let me make one comment. Don't give up on us. Don't give up on the U.S. <laughs> um, 
it, things are very difficult, and you mentioned some of the things that are, that are results of geopolitics and politics. So the loop here and the feedback is that the workforce we are preparing uh, technically, scientifically in the humanities are the people who will be doing the politics as we move forward. So having divisions and, and saying we give up on the US, I think also uh, you heard also from Blinken from the Department of State Secretary that he tries to emphasize um, that the, 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 the relations, for example, with China, we really have to uh, figure it out because we cannot just be seeing them as adversaries, but we are competing. And in the history of the US, if you go back 30 years, it is the US that boosted China to the level of progress, to the astounding level of progress they have. Uh, uh, you mentioned the, the, uh, the Chinese students now. Um, a Caltech, I believe, is half uh, Asian American. And in terms of graduate students, we have a very large population of, of them. And again, the, I understand that it's not very comfortable and things are not, but don't give up. I think the world needs the bridges. We are trying to also keep the bridges with China because in the end, science, education, research are the best diplomacy aspects for people to work together. Our, our, our Chinese colleagues um, are, are, are extremely helpful to us, but we have to recognize that many of them do not also have the power to face their own government in terms of their actions, in terms of the scientific products, in terms of how they profit, how they bring them to industry. So it's, very, it's a very complex situation to be in worldwide. So I would say don't give up on the United States. Yeah, please, Sophia. So I just want to say, just because I mentioned uh, <laughs> getting funding from the U.S., I don't think, for, for me at least, it's not a fetish that I necessarily, you know, we want to have a bridge there. Obviously, uh, you know, European funding is uh, great <laughs> if you can get it. Uh, but it's also sometimes a matter of circumstance, a matter of uh, where your research interests uh, are uh, growing more. So, for example, I work on clinical data. If you want to work on clinical data and have applications on clinical data, the U.S. is a playground because they have, like, the same system. All the states have the same system. They gather a lot, lots of data. They're all in the same language. They have the same standardization. If you try to do this in the uh, EU, uh, I think it would be kind of a nightmare. So sometimes it's just also a matter of circumstance. Uh, that I mean, it is something desirable for me because that's a, a, an area where my research application is very, very solid already. Yeah, on, on the same topic, uh, uh, the U.S. government is making a concerted effort to uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, the uh, uh, influx, uh, uh, actually, uh, the influx of Chinese scholars and so on. So, uh, sir, and I know for a fact that certain, several U.S. universities are on a campaign to attract students from other parts of the world, and especially Europe, because there's more natural uh, uh, links there. So, uh, I think uh, we can see that also as an opportunity. Uh, I mean, it's sad for the reasons that Maria was saying, that no, we do want uh, the international communi community to be open, uh, but we also have to face the realities. Uh, so let me uh, uh, ask Dimitris to... Thank you all. Um, what I'm about to say is not completely hypothetical. Suppose you have... And this is a question from the panelists, but the room as well. Suppose you are handed $5 million a year for five years. 5 million euros a year for five years. Some reasonable, sizable amount of money. And suppose the mission is to improve, uh, to strengthen Greek young scientists. I emphasize the word young. Young meaning perhaps at the level up to an undergraduates, graduates, young assistant professors. When would you spend it? What would be one or two areas that you will prioritize. This is, the, we have already seen some examples. The, the Greek state developed the Robotics Institute with the highest 
Archimedes, they, they made their own choices. Where would you make these choices? Up to you. Whatever. Yeah. Well, you can, would be really no, by the way, no bureaucracy. So you are uh, I, I hand you a did check. You, yes, yes. You hand the check as a private citizen. What is your motivation to hand me a check? The motivation is I mentioned. Who is giving the money? Who is first giving of all? the money? Is the, the state or a private sector? The private sector. The private. No, no things attached. You have to prove to the donor that. Yeah, yeah. That if you okay, succeed, yeah. so Greek good, very young good. people yes. would benefit. Yes. That's the question. So, Am I clear? Yeah, that, that is very clear. And you don't care if the money would be spent in Greece, in Europe, in China, or in the US. That, that would do however we want. So, I would question if you start spending it in China. Okay, good. I mean, me too. But, but uh, let, let, let's start from... Uh, uh, the best way to take. Uh, I thought about the question. Okay. Yeah, very good. Oh, very good. Very good. This is a very good question. Um, uh, uh, shall I take it first? Do you mind? Yeah, so the, the 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 first uh, um, uh, once a donation appears, there is two possibilities uh, of how the donation can be invested. It can be invested through a university. Um, I'm not going to talk about the government because the donation in a lab, for example, it's a very complicated thing and probably it will not work. In a university, it can be done as a sponsored research agreement or it can be done as a gift. If it is done as a gift and the donor has the wish of what is the gift conditions, then the donor will make an agreement with the university that this is for Greek undergraduate, graduate and postdoctoral fellows, you said also assistant professors, and the donor will ask the university how much is, how much, they can say to the university that I don't want to pay overhead. Overhead means is the internal tax that the university keeps from every grant. Yeah, but but, sorry, but aside from the technical aspect, no. what would you do with the money? I have a question. Yes. I know exactly. Oh, okay. All right. So, so what yeah. my question just, is very clear. Let yeah. me make it crystal clear. Yes. yes. The domain you were talking about. Yeah. Domain. You would do what? Yeah. You know, let me ask Andreas. Yes. I have a quick answer to that. Okay. So I will reinvent uh, Hayes. I will establish, <laughs> reinvent Hayes. Reestablish Hayes. Uh, Hellenic Institute of Advanced Studies. And. Uh, with very enlarged scope and enlarged activities, which will be strategically planned. And multi-domain. Well, we have seen some, uh, we, we can think of uh, some priorities, and priorities that are uh, uh, set forth for the last two years are those who might be targeted to artificial intelligence, machine learning, this kind of activities, which will attract the interest of, since you mentioned, the target group should be young scientists. That's uh, yeah. that's a, a great option. Yeah, but I would do. Highest could be a vehicle for that. Right. I would do multi-domain um, uh, quantum science and technology with applied mathematics, with theory, with experimentation, and uh, with physics, applied physics, and then injected with that uh, microelectronics. Uh, and AI machine learning. These are three domains. All of these are multi domains, as you know. Yeah. Sophia? I think I would fund a PhD student for every new hire. Perhaps that would be helpful to the assistant, to the young assistant professors who come to Greece with zero. If, if the question is for Greek. Uh, yeah. Bridges. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, that would be a major benefit for yeah. people who uh, want uh, to yeah. uh, come back to Greece yes. to have something. I want to give the opportunity to all the yeah, panelists to say climate, something. Yeah, obviously, yeah. and the environment. Yeah, Spiros. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you allow us uh, to also remove uh, bureaucratic uh, and legal obstacles, uh, I would use uh, the five million uh, to run an experiment uh, in a Greek department to kind of uh, build it uh, from scratch and build uh, an international program in English with uh, students who are uh, Greek but also from other countries, professors who are Greek and other countries, and uh, see how you can create uh, a world-class uh, department in Greece. 
and so that it can be done. Uh, we would probably need uh, to choose uh, a strong one, right, uh, to go from there. This is something that, uh, by the way, we have tried to persuade the system, but it doesn't allow, right? One of the biggest weaknesses of the Greek university system is that it doesn't allow experiments, right? We all need to do the same thing uh, no matter what. Okay, well, I, I have several hands that had been raised already, so let me just say uh, uh, Spiros, then the gentleman there, then uh, uh, Petros, and, and then Thanasis, so, so, so that I try to keep order of uh, what is going on. So Spiros first, yes. Uh, good morning, I am Spiros Anastasiadis from the University of Crete and the Foundation for Research and Technology. Uh, if I'm allowed, I want to make one short comment on uh, this last question. I would, uh, and then I will ask what I will mention what I wanted to say from the beginning. Uh, there is an expression in the Resilience Fund, the money that would go for research, and that says, trust your stars. This is where I will give the money. I will give the money to the stars. So I will choose the best people that we have, and this is how I will give, the, I will give that money. Uh, and, and actually, Professor Kornberg in 2014 from Caltech, 2014, when we had the, the presidency of the European Council, in a, in a lecture he gave at the Zapion uh, Megor at the end of that, on, uh, uh, when we were discussing what happened in research, he said that uh, instead of giving uh, 100,000 uh, euro to, to 50 people, if you use 500, if you, if you give 500, excuse me, yeah, 500,000 to 10 people, then, then you'll get much better results if these 10 people are, are very good. Uh, now, I want to go to the previous thing about the bridges. We, we mentioned a lot about the funding. Uh, there were situations where there was funding. There was an NSF uh, Greece bilateral program at, at some point. I think Thanos Thanos Panagiotopoulos was one who got a project like that uh, with uh, Yanis Ekonomo many years back from uh, Democritus. Thanos, I think I'm right. You know? Many years back, but he gets a lot of money so he doesn't remember. So, so uh, this kind of project that can be reinvented, re-established re again. I mean, we have the, chair, the chairman of the of the ESETEC, of the National Research Council uh, of Greece uh, here. So maybe with together with the people that uh, at NSF, we can uh, work uh, along these lines. Another another form of collaboration was within this, uh, you know, the the European. Uh, uh, the, the Air Force Lab or the Naval Lab that have an office in, 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 in Europe. So, so that allows also. So these are the opportunities that we have to, to improve and, and, and reestablish so we can get. Because as, as was mentioned by the panel, you know, the, the funding is a very important aspect of the collaboration. This is for research. For education, I think it was, was discussed. These bilateral things are very good. Thank you, Spiros. Uh, please. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Let me just interject a, a, a quick comment. There's a distinction. Private can mean different things. Non-profit or, or, or non-governmental non uh, can, can mean different things. So please, the panel. Do you have here? Yeah. I think we need a, a special session for this discussion. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, multifaceted. It's, uh, it's uh, launched since yesterday because the Prime Minister himself mentioned that uh, he's planning on doing that. Uh, we will not pay justice to this question if we just squeeze it within two or three uh, statements. It's, it's very complicated. That's what I have to say. Well, my personal opinion is up. Uh, but it's. Uh, do you mean with tuition? No, that's, not no, no. that's not enough. Whether they should be allowed or not. Right now, they're not allowed by, uh, by uh, a clause in the... In, in the Whether you yeah. think it's a good idea yeah. or not, we have one good. And to the extent you think it's good, one 
what, what would be the one or two design principles? One could be they should be free, whatever that means. But I would love to hear the views and see what faculty would be complex. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, there's, yeah. There's some reluctance because it is a very complicated issue and, and I fully understand. I that. also think that it is good. Yes. So take two votes already. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe three. Well, uh, the, the chairman of the uh, National Accredit Authority of Higher Education, uh, Pericles Mitkas, we are all ears. No, I, I would say that, that uh, it can be all of these things together. It could be a good, a bad, or, or a, an average uh, idea. It depends. It depends on what you have in mind. I mean, if you, if you if you have in mind to build something like MIT in Greece, yeah, it could be a good idea if you have the money. Uh, but if you end up with a, a small college that uh, just uh, sells degrees for money, then it's obviously a bad idea. Uh, if we say no at the very beginning, so we don't give room to MIT or to any other university to try to Greece. No, the, uh, the answer was to the question, is it a good, a bad, or, 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 or uh, an indifferent uh, idea? But uh, it is a yes. It seems that it is a yes from the government now, so we'll have to, to deal with it. Uh, the, the announcement yesterday was that uh, uh, there is a path, and uh, the, uh, our authority, the Hellenic Authority for Higher Education, uh, will have to set standards for uh, uh, evaluating or accrediting these uh, institutions. It's, it's a surprise to me also, so yeah. we'll see. Yeah, I, just, just a, 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 an explanative comment. There's a clause in the Greek constitution forbidding the establishment of private universities. So, so that's, uh, that's part of the question. So, and then the government is proposing ways to circumvent that and, and allow some form of... Okay, uh, Petros. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to go back to these bridges of education and, and research. I think there's big overarching themes that um, society and, and the whole world are facing today. There's issues about climate change, there's water shortage, there's inequality, and there's even more specific things like uh, fires. Um, and so, for example, the, the US has recently announced a very big problem, a very big program about how to handle uh, fires, and I would like to stress that uh, with my friend Spiros Lalis, about a year ago, we started thinking maybe we can create a common joint program to see how we can address um, fires and their spreading uh, in Greece. And there is my other friend from the University of Thessalonica, Padmitriou, maybe here, who tries to join also this effort. So, if we can find some overarching major themes, be it decarbonization, climate change, fires, things that can help. Uh, not only the Greek society, but the world. I think one can seek money uh, from foundations to f help finance um, uh, these bridges. So, so I think HIAS can be a facilitator, a, a place where people can come uh, together, but creating bridges on topics that are very important and putting Greeks from all over the world together, I think that can be an interesting way to go forward and to solve some real challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Petros. Uh, uh, I don't know if anybody wants to comment, uh, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, Thanasis was uh, uh, next. And let me Thank see you. who else raised um, hands. Piros and, okay. Thanos Panagiotopoulos from Princeton University. I would like to thank the organizers for this second wonderful opportunity to interact. And I had a short comment and a question for the panel. The short comment is that sometimes, even for European Research Council grants that in principle allow um, Cross payments uh, across the, the Atlantic, there are issues related to, let's say, uh, I have a grant, it took a very long time to negotiate with lawyers, and the sticking point was not intellectual property, which was easy to deal with, but rather jurisdiction for resolution of potential uh, legal issues that may arise at some point. So the EU had a very strict uh, policy where, and Princeton did not want to have to be dragged at courts, whatever in Brussels or whatever, if there was a, a dispute. Let's set this aside. Um, what I want to hear perhaps more about is the comment that uh, Rector Budovis uh, had that there are very few Greek academics here in this, in this room, and that was the case also last year. And, and I see that as, as 
potentially some weakness in the foundations of that bridge we're trying to, to build. And I wanted to hear your, your comments as to how we can improve that, how we can make, uh, give something of value to the, to the Greek academics to have them participate more actively in this bridge building. And I see there are a lot of Greek academics, but the, who were recently in the US or who were uh, part of that bridge, they feel they should be here. But how about the broader community that don't belong in that category? Thank you. Well, the five million from Versimas would help, but <laughs> to attract them. So please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Maria. go ahead. Well, I, I, was, I was going to say that uh, as um, uh, ES is getting, uh, is getting established, I think it will, it will get known and more Greek academics will become members and start the exchanges. I think that was seeded as Philikia from, as we heard, from, with a few people in the ground and, uh, and the, the, the Greeks of the diaspora, the, the academics of the diaspora. So I think we are on the way of doing what you just said. The members, I, we, we, are, we heard it in the opening remarks, the current members in the US and here um, are looking to discuss, including more members, and uh, the symposium and spreading the word uh, should uh, prepare the ground for other people to inquire about the, the effort and attract them. Well, well th three of the panelists are from uh, faculty from Greek universities, so please. Elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Petros Kumutsakos mentioned the, uh, the plan, uh, the urgent plan to have a uh, highest uh, house in Greece. And this is essential. And we don't have it uh, so far. The other thing, is, if we move in this direction, then what I uh, envision is to have uh, um, uh, ambassadors of highest distributed in every Greek university. Uh, so we plan on such kind of activities, but first we have to have a base of reference in Greece. And this is not the case yet. And if the students uh, get, uh, you know, uh, involved through activities like the ones that I uh, mentioned before, uh, three or four days ago, and get to understand what highest can offer them, then we can penetrate in the academic community and bring yes. the Greek professors our colleagues here in, in this kind of, uh, of uh, events. Anybody else would care to comment? Okay. Well, uh, there were uh, three questions there. Spiros, first. Just a couple of comments. And, uh, I'd like to hear your opinion. Uh, first of all, it struck me that uh, the question by Professor Bertsimas was not really answered. Uh, and uh, perhaps because we're all afraid to be seen as being uh, chauvinistic in terms of our disciplines. Uh, and I think it points to a more a bigger problem. That, and the problem is that there is no strategic, strategic uh, uh, planning in this country. Uh, we are small. We cannot afford to be MIT or Harvard, to, for that matter. Uh, so we have to focus. I completely I endorse that fully. And we have, somebody said it earlier, uh, we have to uh, strengthen existing excellence. We cannot just scrap. And I don't care if this is in poetry, whether it is in engineering, whether it is in biology. Um, and I actually, you know, I think that this is something which is extremely important. And I think that HIAS can very much help in, uh, in building up a strategy. Given the excellence of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the membership, let's say, okay? And we talk about brain gain and all that stuff. Brain gain uh, can happen with two things. One is excellence. If I'm a 45-year-old or 40-year-old uh, 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 academic in an ascending curve of the career, I need to come to somewhere where I, I know I can promote my career. I, 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 can, I can become excellent in my discipline. And the second thing, which is, is money. If I have a couple of kids, 
that have started in the United States or in Switzerland or in, in anywhere, uh, how can I come back with, uh, with 1,200? Uh, the, the big goal is 1,200 uh, you know, uh, euros per month. You can't do that. And finally, research, which is education, it's equivalent to education. Academic education is research. It's not an accident that Harvard and Princeton and all that these places, MIT, are excellent undergraduate institutions and excellent research institutions. That's not an accident. So here, we don't talk about that. Moreover, we have managed to separate research from education, it's the institutionally. And during the campaign, because of my uh, assumed uh, sort of uh, 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 as a head of the of the SETEC, I haven't heard the word Erevna has not been mentioned. Okay, and now we are in the same boat with the Kalathis uh, Nikogiras. We can't we can advance like that, especially if in a small place like we are. So, we just cannot advance like that. So, I, I think I'll you stop. are helping. I think you are helping um, here, reframing the question. The question um, is: What is the strategy for research and education for workforce development, so that it gives back to either more research and development? Either, either academia or industry. What is the strategy? And then you have to say not the strategy for the next year, but the strategy for a horizon that it is 20 years. Once you, did, once you do this study, and this study could be something that could be done in, in, the, fra in the frame of, of the organization we're discussing here, of the highest, uh, once you do this study, then you will know wh how to invest uh, the five and the 50 million. I, I think you helped us reframe a little bit the question. I, mean, I would have no problem giving an answer to Professor Desmond. He may, he may not agree with me, <laughs> which is no problem. I, I think that computer science, I mean, I'm calling computer science artificial intelligence. Oh, computation. Putting it in one big uh, and applied mathematics as well. And biology. Again, I don't agree with this statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Right? We cannot afford I mean, the 21st century, whether we like it or we don't like it, is biology. It a, plays a very major role simply because that allows us to, to, to become immortal, it allows us to change our sex, it allows us to improve our sex. What more do you want? I'm not sure I want any of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I like that either. Spiro, you, uh, j j just a very quick comment. Spiro, I'm afraid that you, uh, in practical terms, what you imply, what you imply is uh, not to uh, split the, ministry, the education and research in two different ministries. Is that... Uh, <laughs> Okay, well, let me give the floor to a few people who have not spoken yet. Yeah, please, go ahead, uh, Baras. <laughs> but but we're, we're coming close to the Hello. end Hi. of our time, so try to be... So yeah. I'm trying to, I will try to bring you back to some practical answers to this question up there, not philosophy. So uh, I am John Baras, I'm from the University of Maryland. I'm a business professor at the Royal Institute of Technology and Technical University of Munich. This is my 50th year as academic, and I spent 30 years in working in international collaborations. Let me tell you some things that work. Bottom up. We have had collaborations with KTH in Maryland, TUM in Maryland, and TUA in Maryland, with agreements between two universities, which allowed visitors to come from either place, with the formula in general being something like that. The university where the person is coming from pays the salary, or there can be a supplement from the receiving university, and the receiving university allows for accommodation and travel expenses. We had many of those. Some of them came from NTUA, all right? One actually of those that came to Maryland as part of her PhD studies, now she became a professor in Maryland. At, 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 sorry, at, at NTUA. So if you do this right, you can actually reverse 
the, 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 the people leaving and they can come back. The other one, also from the UAE, came to Maryland for a study at the master's level. He was grabbed immediately by General Electric after a illustrious career in, 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 in Europe. He now came back to, to Greece with a leading group in Titan, in industry. So these are examples that I have worked personally in the work. The other thing I would like to encourage, and I'll come with a question at the end, is that general things from top to top don't work. We try to make collaboration, and George was involved in this, in CPS between Europe and, and US failed. I predicted what's going to work is bilateral, and that's what we're doing. So we have now, in general, NSF collaboration with European agency in Holland. All right, in, in Germany with DFG and uh, with France, uh, with uh, Israel, and the last three was India, Sweden, and Switzerland. The key to observing these new agreements is that there are not two proposals going to two countries. One proposal just by one country, by one com by own committee, and then the funds come from different countries to support. And some of this can be also for visits. Okay, so I am in, I am very much interested, and, I, and I'm trying to help as much as possible to create something like that between NSF and corresponding agency in Greece with the same formula. One proposal, because if you get two proposals, the probabilities multiply and you get down to get anything approved. So the question, and then there is DOD funding as mentioned. DOD in several programs, including the MURIs, they allow foreign investigators, but they require that you go there and do the work. But as, as mentioned already, there is an office in London from Air Force and Navy, and you can get this same kind of agreement. The question is, is it possible for HIAS, for HIS, to become a repository of examples of working things like that so that people can come and find out, even with recipes, how to do it, and even references, like this person has done it, go talk to him or her, and so on and so forth. I think that would be very useful because yeah. as you hear around here in this room, there are many good ideas, but they are not all known to everybody. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if some part of the activity of the organization can be in that direction, that will help a lot. Okay, so I think this is a question more to uh, HIS, so I'll try to answer it. Uh, uh, and, and actually, I want to comment on an earlier uh, uh, issue that was raised a moment ago. So yes, we have tried to do that uh, specifically by putting together a long list of uh, distinguished academics around the world, uh, whom we call our members, and try to establish uh, uh, what their expertise is toward this goal. We don't have uh, infinite resources, but we are working toward this goal to make a database and, and connect it and make it available to young researchers and so on. The second uh, uh, comment uh, uh, that I, uh, I wanted to make uh, uh, in regards to an issue that was raised earlier about strategic planning, uh, we also see uh, our role as contributing to strategic planning for the benefit of the whole country. And a concrete example is what our, uh, our president mentioned at the very beginning, the report that we made to the government about strategic planning in the area of robotics, which resulted in the establishment of the Robotics Institute and so on. So I think we can definitely contribute in this direction, and it is our goal to the extent that we can meet that goal. So let me try to see if there's uh, other questions. So yeah, there's one here. Please go ahead. Uh, it's not so much a question as a comment. Uh, I'm uh, Kyros Kudulakos from the University of Toronto in Canada. Um, I wanted to bring up uh, three models that seem to be actually quite successful in building the kinds of bridges that we're discussing here today. Uh, one of them is between the U.S. and Israel. Uh, this is not simply a bridge, it's basically a revolving door. And I think it would be very instructive uh, for uh, all of us to see what mechanisms were used, both political and not, uh, to actually make that happen. That's number one. Uh, number two, um, uh, Max Planck Institutes in Germany, um, another extremely successful model uh, that's not within a university, um, that establishes institutes based on a director who is recruited, uh, or based on strategic uh, considerations about specific areas that might impact both the country and research, research more generally. Uh, it requires a lot of resources, of course, uh, but that is uh, nevertheless extremely successful and attracts uh, people to Germany who have actually no connection to Germany, uh, which we cannot ignore. Uh, the third one is actually in Canada. Uh, some of you may know Hinton. Uh, Hinton came to Toronto um, as part of an institute called uh, Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. This may ring some bells. Um, 
And uh, what that provided was essentially funding, a lot of funding, uh, for uh, attracting uh, top researchers uh, to come to Canada. This was another, another example of that was actually, uh, I was talking to Ephemius about Aspuru Guzik. Uh, he came to Canada just a few years ago, again as part of a big funding package that was, that was designed to bring top researchers uh, to Canada. So in that case, we're not talking about 5 million, perhaps 50 or even more for creating these clusters of excellence that would not be simply attractors to within Greece, but uh, across the entire world, in fact. Uh, yeah, thank you for the comment. In fact, uh, uh, I, I said one second. Uh, uh, in fact, we are uh, very vigorously trying to pursue some of what you were suggesting, and in particular, uh, uh, at, uh, I'm expressing my own opinion at the moment. Uh, there are at least two institutions in Greece that are uh, 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 approaching the status of uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, research institutions that you were mentioning in Germany, namely ITE or Fourth and, and Democritus. We are in close contact with both of them. Actually, the president of uh, Democrats is sitting in the audience, and we are working uh, uh, very closely with them to establish these kinds of connections and, and see to what extent we can make this happen uh, uh, in close resemblance to other uh, examples in the world. So that was my comment. Let me take one last question, and uh, after that we'll stop because uh, we're eating away from the uh, uh, break time. So please go ahead. You are appointed already. Thank you. Uh, uh, we've already uh, uh, extended our time by uh, almost 10 minutes, so I'd like to stop here, thank our panelists, and thank all of you in the audience who participated in this.